What up, Huck Squad? In this week's 3 Minute Thursday, we are going to be talking about one of the worst things in all of disc golf, and that is ticks. Um, ticks are just absolutely terrible, and this year specifically, they've been pretty bad. So I'm going to be going over five or six different things that you can do to help avoid getting ticks on you while you're out playing disc golf. So, hope you enjoy. So the first tip that I'm going to talk about here is using different aerosol sprays to help you out. Permethrin is used for your clothing and for your gear. So I actually got this stuff which is insect repellent and it has permethrin in it. And anything like this with permethrin or really serious tick repellent, you're not supposed to spray on your skin. So really be careful with reading the directions. And I was going to use an example of this for this video, but after reading the directions, it takes a lot of planning to use this stuff. Um, you got to be outdoors like I am now, no wind. Um, you should be wearing gloves so that none of this gets on your skin and you have to let your clothes and your gear, so most people spray it on their disc golf bag with no discs in it and their shoes, um, but you have to let them dry for like two hours before you can even touch them and move them around just so that none of the residual um, spray gets on your skin. Supposedly the permethrin works really, really well, so after today's video I'm probably gonna end up doing that to my bag and my shoes and I can give you guys an update in a little while on how this stuff works, but permethrin seems to work really well with all the reviews that it gets online. What I have been using lately is this deep woods. Um, not sure how well you'll be able to see that. So what I've been doing with it, I've just been spraying it all over my shoes, all over my legs, as much as I can. I have been putting it a little bit on my arms, but for the most part, I've just been spraying it on my shoes and my legs, and it definitely has helped. I don't know if the whole wear pants thing really helps for ticks, because a couple weeks ago, I was wearing pants when I was doing a workday at Borderland, and as soon as I finished and I got home, I had a tick on my thigh and I had a tick on my, on my knuckle. I really don't know if wearing pants helps. I can understand the logic behind it. You're brushing, you're going through a bunch of brush, and you know the pants are going to keep the ticks from getting right onto your skin. But even if they get onto your pant leg, it's not that hard for them to just crawl up to your waist or crawl down to your ankles and then crawl back up your skin. So, really creepy. I really I hate ticks so much, but. Two aerosol sprays will definitely help. One you can use on your skin, one you can use on your gear, and that will give you a good baseline to at least try to keep the ticks off of you. And just like that, you throw a bad shot and it lands in what I like to call Tick Nation. So, let's see what we'll do about this. My disc ended up kicking way off the fairway, all the way down into the rough down here on the right. Um, as you can see, it's pretty brushy, pretty bad down there, so a couple different tips that you can do when retrieving your disc from the rough. So you should leave your bag on the main trail, then go in to throw from your lie or go to get your disc or whatever you need to do. I also heard that if you have a Zuka cart and that cart keeps your bag off the ground, that also helps a lot too because you don't really think about it when you're going to get your disc and you just take your bag off and you put it down on a bunch of crap, but that's kind of how ticks can get on your bag too. So put your down, bag down on the main trail, then go get your disc or bring one of your scrambled discs in with you so that you can just pitch out, grab your disc and come back. After you drop your bag off on the side of the trail, my next big tip is to survey the way that you need to go pick up your disc and take the path of least resistance. So right here isn't too bad. Um, if I took the right side over here, there's a lot more brush than if I took the left side. So you just want to try to avoid having all this brush rubbing up against you. So whatever the path of least resistance is, that's the path you want to take to get your disc. So if you've ever played Hawkins Woods, which I'm guessing 99% of you guys watching have not played Hawkins Woods, hole two here, basket's way over to the right. A lot of the time if you throw a backhand off the tee, it'll stable back out and go way over there to the left. Or if you throw a flick and it hits one of those trees and kicks to the left, it is just absolutely rough over there. So for one more sake of a demonstration, I'm gonna be throwing my disc directly into all that crap on the left there and just showing you guys how I would go retrieve it as safely as I could while taking the path of least resistance. All right, that is definitely in the thicket. So my disc came all the way over and it cut left right next to these two trees here. So sometimes people, like I said before, would just walk right in with their bag on, try to find their disc, find their disc, and then put their bag on all this crap here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bag down. If I was scrambling from there to the basket over at the normal position, I would just take a disc that I think I would need. From here, I would probably end up doing like a turnover tactic flick. So I'm gonna grab
grab my tactic. I'm going to survey the area right here just to see if there's any sort of paths that go in with a little bit less brush. And there actually is. So over here, this brush area is way less thick than this brush area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, try to avoid my legs touching as much brush as I can, search for my disc at the same time, And I don't know if you can see, but I'm also like high stepping. I'm like raising my knees up too. So you want to raise your knees up, try to keep your shins off of all the brush. Ended up finding my disc out here. It is in a really crappy spot with a spider web, but I am going to try to get up and down. Yep, I think I put it in the circle there. And then what you want to do is continue to work your way out of the brush slowly, high stepping your way out. And that's pretty much the way that I get all my discs when they go into a crappy area like this. Put my bag down, grab the disc that you want, survey which way you want to go in looking for your disc, and make sure that you're just raising your knees. The last two tips that I'm going to share with you guys are more so done at home than on the course. And one of which being probably the most important tip of all of them. And that is proactive checking. So even while you're out on the course, I guess you can do it, but you just want to be checking your legs, making sure no ticks are crawling up. The small ones, you are not going to feel at all. The bigger ones, sometimes when they're crawling up your leg, you can feel them on like your leg hair. When you get home, do a daily tick check every single day that you play disc golf. Finish your round. If it's not a hot day and you really don't sweat, you really don't get dirty, just go home, go into the bathroom, take all your clothes off, everything, use your phone light, and just shine your phone light all over your whole body. Check the backs of your legs, your legs here, your waist, your inner thighs, under your arms, really just check your whole entire body. And doing those daily tick checks have been so helpful with me for catching those ticks within that first six to eight hour range. If you play around at noontime and you know you get home, you have lunch, whatever, you still have a couple hours where you can just hop into the bathroom, strip down, check your whole body, make sure you don't have any ticks. You pull those suckers out within the first couple hours, you should feel pretty good. But you play around after work one night, you go home, you have dinner, you didn't get very dirty, you didn't sweat very much, you're like, eh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Finish up your night, you know, you go to bed, you wake up the next morning and you go to take a shower and you see that you have a tick on your hip or a tick on your thigh. And you're just like, oh, why didn't I check last night? And so checking for ticks is just so important every single time after you play around. No matter what time of day it is, just go home. Even if you don't get sweaty and you don't have to shower, you should still check. But obviously most of the time you get pretty dirty while you're out here playing disc golf for a whole 18 holes, even if it's only like 60 or 70 degrees out. Um, and you should still go home and take a shower, especially in the summer with poison ivy. You want to get the poison ivy off your, off your legs and stuff, but that's a whole nother video. Honestly, it just comes down to personal hygiene too. Just staying clean, making sure you check yourself, but proactive checking is like my number one tip. I've had eight ticks in me this year, eight. Seven of which I caught in the first like four hours. A couple of them I caught even in the first like two hours. So I'm really happy that I got seven out of eight of them out of my body in under six hours. The one that I didn't get out in under six hours is leading into my next and final tip. And I live in a studio apartment. I usually keep my clothes at the foot of my bed, like my dirty clothes. Um, so I got home, I changed, I took all my clothes off. I did my tick check. I put my clothes in the dirty clothes pile. I didn't have any ticks on me and I went to bed. And the next morning I woke up and I had a tick on my hip. And I was so frustrated because I did a very thorough tick check the night before. I had nothing on me and I somehow had a tick on me in the morning and I concluded that it was probably because I got home, put my clothes at the foot of my bed and there very well could have been a tick on my clothes that crawled into my bed and was waiting for me while I was sleeping. It literally makes me want to like pull my hair out that ticks, that that happened. That ticks just kind of linger like on your clothes and can crawl around your apartment when you get home if they're still on your clothes. Ticks are just the absolute worst part of disc golf. I hope all those tips helped you out. I know they all sound pretty basic and really it's like nothing crazy what I just explained, all this stuff, but if you practice every single tip that I put out here today, you should limit the amount of ticks that you have on you 
and definitely the amount of ticks that stay in you for long enough to contract a tick-borne illness. So I hope you guys learned something here today. I hope it wasn't just me rambling about a bunch of stuff that everyone already knows, but Ticks can be a heartbreaker, man. They can be a life changer. You can see with some of the pros, you see with Brody Smith, he just got into disc golf and he got Lyme's disease within his first couple months. You have to be careful. This stuff is not a joke. And especially in here in New England, with all this rough that we deal with, you're not throwing perfect drives every single time. We're gonna be bushwhacking. We're gonna be looking for discs for 10 minutes at a time. So you have to be careful and you have to be proactive when you're checking. So hope this video, it actually was a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be, but hope this video helped open your eyes to just the tick problem that we have in the disc golf community and what we can do to solve it. So hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, drop a sub if you wanna see more. And remember to keep eating your vegetables, even though that probably doesn't have much to do with tick prevention. <laughs>